Hey traders, I've got a really interesting lesson for you guys today covering a new feature that was recently added to PineScript. This morning I woke up and saw a post on the PineScriptors network forum over at pinescriptors.net where someone asked, HLF asked, how to calculate the cumulative total count of tick movements in a real-time bar in PineScript. Now this wasn't possible until recently, but today I found out a way to do this and it's actually quite interesting and a pretty important feature that most traders probably don't know about, at least not yet since it's a new feature, but it is quite powerful. Uh, I answered his question, basically his question was, hi everyone, I'm a bit stuck and looking for some help. I'm working on a script where I'm trying to count every tick movement, whether up or down, and show the cumulative total movement in a bar as a count. And he's stuck because every time PineScript detects a new tick on a real-time bar, whatever your script is doing is basically reset. So when we're using a VAR variable, that variable is saved across all of the bars on our chart. Now, these are terrible bars I'm drawing, but you get the idea. If you don't use VAR, then every time a new bar starts printing, whatever was saved on this previous bar gets deleted in your variables. But if you use the VAR keyword, then on the next bar that starts, that variable will be saved from the previous bar. However, these variables are only updated once on a real-time bar. So even though you're using the VAR keyword, if you're trying to count price movements on a bar, the highest you can count to is one, because as soon as the price change is detected and your VAR variable, your counter is incremented by one, it will never be incremented again, even though new ticks are being detected on the real-time bar. But TradingView have recently added a new feature, and this was on their blog that I read a couple of weeks ago, but didn't think much of it until I read this uh, person's question. The most important improvement that certainly slipped under my radar is the VAR IP keyword, which is useful for when you want to keep track of some, some data and how it changes inside the real-time bar. All regular Pine variables are subject to what is known as a rollback, where on each new data tick, the state of the variable is reset back to its value on the previous bar before evaluating the new data. The VAR IP keyword escapes this and enables you to compare the current value of a variable with its value on the previous tick as opposed to the previous bar, which opens up a whole new world of possibilities such as counting how many ticks have occurred on the current bar. So let's jump over to the charts and I will show you what this looks like in practice. So here I am on a real-time chart and we're on the five minute chart here. And what you see down here is this script that I've written, which is counting the ticks in price action. So remember that every time PineScript detects a change in price, your script is iterated. So your script is reevaluated. All the code is executed on every price change on a real time bar. Uh, it behaves slightly differently on historical bars. So on historical bars, there are no tick data. You just have the open, high, low, and close. So on each historical bar, your script is run once, but on the real time bar, it's executed every time price changes or volume changes. So we have price tick movement and volume tick movement. So this script down here is calculating both. The blue number here is how many times price changed on the current bar. That's price ticks. The purple number here is how many times volume changed on the current bar. So that basically means how many orders were executed. It doesn't tell you the quantity of the position size, it just tells you that a trade was executed uh, through the this broker at least, through Oanda. So every time this purple number changes, that means a trade has been executed at market, on this market. And every time the blue number changes, that means that an order was executed at a different price to where price currently is. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's open up the source code to the script. It's actually quite a simple script and I'll break down what each line of code here is doing. So first we need to prepare our tick counter variables. So for this, we use the new VAR IP keyword and each variable here is saved across each real time tick. So every time price moves or volume moves, these VAR IP variables are not rolled back or cleared. That allows us to use a couple of if statements here to count the tick changes. So our first if statement here checks, is the current bar a real-time bar? And is the last price not equal to the current price? And last price is just the closing price. And every time 
this condition is met, so we're on a real-time bar and the current price changes, we add one to our ticks counter and we reset our last price to the current market price so that we can detect the next change in price. And this just loops over and over and over again until a new bar is detected, which is this if statement here. So if the bar state is new, which means this is the first tick on a brand new bar, then all of our variables are reset. We reset our ticks to zero, we reset reset our volume changes to zero, and we, we reset our last price to the current closing price. And this middle if statement here simply counts the volume changes. So every time price changes, this if statement is, um, this code is executed. However, if we're on a real time bar and price has not changed, so the last price is equal to the current closing price, remember that our script is executed on each new tick. So we can safely assume that this uh, code here is only being executed if this price hasn't changed, if volume has changed. So we can just increment our volume counter here. You could also add another VAR IP here and call it last volume and set it to the volume and do the same thing we did with the closing price. But because our script is executed on every tick, be it a price tick or a volume tick, we can safely assume that if the price is the same as it was on the previous tick, then we just have a volume change not a price change. And that's it, it's really quite a simple script. Now obviously you can do a lot more with this than just simply count this information. So for example, you could use this approach to objectively uh, determine or analyze the volatility of a real-time bar. So just because a bar is large uh, doesn't necessarily mean that there was a lot of volatility in that bar. So for example, we have this bar here, this green bar here, um, it doesn't look that volatile when you're just looking at it, but actually over the past um, five bars, five five minute bars, so the past 25 minutes, this middle bar here, this green bar was actually the most volatile bar over the past five bars. So this red bar here looks quite volatile, but not quite as many orders were executed on that red bar as the one before it. So that's some very interesting information to have, especially for day traders, people who trade the five minute, one minute chart, um, I imagine this approach would be much more effective on crypto and stocks, or maybe even futures markets than necessarily Forex. But it's still quite interesting, even on the Forex markets, it is quite interesting to see how, how many times price changed on the current real time bar. That's quite interesting information to have. And let's turn on the volume here. So you can see that the volume here was higher than the past five bars looking left from the current bar. So if I put in a horizontal line here, you can see that I started running the script on this bar here. The script cannot calculate um, tick movements on historical bars because that bar is printed to the chart. It can only count it while the script is running on the current real time bar. So keep that in mind. As soon as we refresh the page or change to a different market, this will all reset back to zero. But for now, we've left this script running on this market for the past half hour or so. And you can see now even this big green bar right here didn't have nearly as many volume changes or price changes as the past three bars preceding it here. So that's really interesting information. Of course, we've still got a minute to go. So I imagine it will creep up there. But anyway, I thought this would just be a cool demonstration of how to use this new VAR IP variable. And there are infinite use cases for this uh, if you get creative. Uh, but obviously the most useful one is just counting tick changes to determine volatility on the current bar. So yeah, just to recap, the purple line here is how often volume changed on the current bar. So right now we've had roughly 80, nearly 90 trades executed on the current bar, on this five minute bar through Oanda on this market. And it is a quiet time of day. So I imagine during a highly volatile time of day, this number would be much higher. And we've had 75 price changes in that time or 75 price ticks on this five minute bar since it began. And of course, as always, the source code to this script will be underneath this video if you want to play around with this code. There we have a new bar just started and you can see our counters reset to zero and the whole process just starts again. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Hope you found that interesting and useful in your scripting. Good luck with your trading and I will see you in the next lesson.